dramatically in the last 10 years and that it's almost undoable anymore. If you look back um, 15 years ago, there was no, you didn't have to even have to turn on a computer to be a program director. And today you have to be so savvy and more than just turning them on, but computer programs, research, all the sophistications that have occurred in technology, between 1980 and 1990, more technological changes happened in this world than did for the previous 100 years. So the job of the program director has gotten so difficult. It already, I mean, Jerry knows, he was, he's been doing it for enough years to know that it used to just be records, uh, relationship with the disc jockeys, a good promotional sense, and it's certainly not that anymore. The better the personalities, the healthier the radio station. And so if, uh, I think the future of, of all formats, certainly top 40 included, is in the, in the caliber, the value, the, the uh, expertise, the entertainment value of its personalities, whether they're talking in eight seconds or doing a high personality morning show. The problem that top 40 is facing right now is the fact that the 90s really is, is the time where we're really going to have niche formats at this point. It's, it's getting more difficult for a top 40 to be all things to all people. Uh, I think we're going to see more CHRs leading either one direction or the other. I, it, we've, we've just reached the point that uh, just this country, you have young country and you have traditional country. You have AOR and classic rock and, and uh, you know, now this third format of current hard rock. Same thing is happening with top 40. And with few exceptions, most of your, your successful CHRs are leaning either one direction or another, be it a KISS 108 or a PGC. These stations are successful because they are leaning in a certain direction. We tend to focus on the format and the way it used to be done or the way it always was done instead of the listener and the way the listener wants it done right now. Um, this is a good time to go watch Jurassic Park because dinosaurs died because they didn't evolve with changing circumstances. And CHR people that don't evolve and adapt to changing circumstances will go the way of the dinosaur. Everybody talks about fun on the radio and they, want, they think that the key to top 40 is that it's got to be fun and that's the answer. And then they'll, what they'll do is end up uh, listening on a listen line to another radio station that's having good ratings and they'll copy their liners if they've got a little bit of a caustic attitude to them and put them on the radio and think that's the answer. And that's not the way that you have fun. It really is. Too many old guys that are controlling the radio station, maybe not just not the consultant, set them aside for a second. You still got the general manager in the way. I look at this, for example, at Q101 in Chicago, which went new rock with Robert Murphy still in morning drive and all the old jocks intact. They, you know, they'd been an AC station for 10 years. Now they were a new rock station, and everything, the whole attitude of the station between the records was absolutely the same. Wouldn't somebody 22 years old have been able to tell them that that wouldn't work? Radio can't afford the research that an Anheuser-Busch does. Uh, I, I think radio is suffering right now uh, from serious paralysis by analysis. I think that we've got to get back and break a few rules and get back in the streets. And, and do it the old-fashioned way. Just know what's going on with, with your audience. And to do that, you have to have program directors that are in touch with the street. Radio stations have, have really started to squeeze creativity out of, the, out of the radio station because as we become more and more of a serious business with serious debt service and serious planning and, and a lot of things that we should do, uh, radio stations have started to, uh, to lose those employees and every radio station used to have one or two or ten of these who were seriously off center. who were really creative, whacked out people who were in touch with the street. Uh, but creative people like that tend to be sometimes problem employees and so they get weeded out of the radio station because they don't conform, they don't dress the same as everybody else and they may not show up for staff meetings quite on time. Uh, but you've got to have a lot of that in the radio station. You've got to, you've got to have a staff, somebody, whether it's two or three of the jocks or a, an incredibly in-touch program director, or whether it's just the secretaries at the radio station, but somebody at the radio station has got to be in touch. It comes down to the top 40 has to be the soundtrack to the lifestyle of young adults, period. I worked for probably the most stifling person uh, in the world in the years of RKO, uh, whose name was Paul Drew. And he had a very interesting comment, and that was, if you have an idea for a good promotion, put it on the radio. If you're a professional at what you do, how bad can it be? But if you discuss it with enough people, they'll take the gloss of it. So if you have great ideas, go with them, rather than trying to discuss them with a thousand other people to see if they're really good ideas or not. This is our last business for the day, and it takes great pleasure for me to introduce you from Billboard Magazine, Michael Ellis. Michael? Hey. 
I'll just introduce the entire panel, and then we'll, we'll get right into it. I'll start on the far left. Uh, Charlie Lake <laughs> Motown. <laughs> Michael Steele from ERG. Sherwin, Sherwin. Gary Tanner from RCA. Danny Bush from Atlantic. Mark Ratner from Reprise. And Mark Gorlick from MCA. <laughs> Barbara Seltzer from Epic. Jerry Blair from Columbia. Bill Fordresher, Bill Fordresher from Zoo. Bob Catania from Electra. All right. John Abulos from Virgin. And certainly, last but certainly not least, Billy Braille from Interscope. It's phenomenal that we have so much great information to utilize, okay? And the key is, as with any piece of information, is how you utilize that information. Just because it's information means nothing. Let's it's how you utilize that information as you said and apply that as you said. Let's, let's just get important. a couple and more. And who you yeah. take it to and what their uh, capacity is for understanding exactly. that let's, let's you're explaining exactly. to them. All right, let's get a couple more examples. Michael Steele's been waiting. No, I think uh, it's tremendous information. We can always improve on it and try to get more stations uh, that report. But as far as uh, the Proclaimers record, is a record that radio found, started from a movie, and we looked at the BDS, not on a weekly basis, but I pull it out every single day and utilize that information. I could see which four markets in different parts of the country were breaking that record. When a record goes from eight spins to 40 spins in less than two weeks, you know you have a hit. I don't, I don't know if you necessarily can, to tell you the truth. There are some songs, and for an example is the Stereo MC is connected. We were probably the last radio station in the country to add that. Um, we play it only at night. We play it on the weekend on day party, but rest, we don't play it during the day. Uh, the latest one I took home to my wife, who was 36 years old, she said, if you don't add that, I'm not going to listen to your radio station anymore. So this is the same, same record as, uh, as Connected. She says, I like this one a lot better. So you have to talk so to your one, wife. That one's coming out of left field. So it's a, it's a yeah, talk Can to I my she, wife. Hey, she did 7-7. Seven, seven. <coughs> okay. You know, what I'm saying is it's a record by record basis for the market. Connected. I don't think we could have done it, but with this, with Step It Up, I think we might have, might be able to See, take you it. You mean the, the market it's or a the surprise. radio station? Isn't there a difference? Okay. Uh, right, uh, excuse me. Yes. I'm sorry. I asked oh, a question. Certainly, please. Thank yeah. you. Uh, do you mean the market or the radio station? In yeah. terms of what? You don't understand my question. No, no. Go ahead. You said that you're selecting records based on what is correct for your marketplace. My right. question to you is, do you mean the marketplace of Columbus, Ohio, or your radio station? What, my, what the audience perceives, uh, what they'll get from my radio station, that's what they what expect. Would, that's all I wanted to know. With the rap records, you got to see the sales. And once you see the sales, you got to go back to radio. And you know what? I guarantee you that if they had sound scan in the late 70s, all these goofy rock records, if the program directors realized <laughs> there's a waiting list. If, the, if they had sound scan in the 70s, a lot of these rock records, which they fought us on, they would have seen that their audience buys that stuff. It's very hard to convince programmers who buys the records? You know, you can have the sound scan, but you gotta say, hey, those are the guys that listen to Mike's radio station. I'm, I'm sure that was the problem, you know. Is radio more responsive now to sales, in your opinion, than they were? I think, I think, <clears throat> I think the leaders in uh, radio programming have become a lot more interested in sales, at least in my conversations with them over the last couple or three years. That is the three or four people at radio who will still speak to me. But <laughs> I think, seeing as how we're now in what, about year number 16, probably, of uh, you know, serious uh, usage of call-out research in the major markets and, of course, now in medium and even smaller markets around the country, thanks to consultants and uh, research groups. You know, after doing that for 15 or 16 years and you have a three share, you start going, maybe this isn't the total answer. Maybe it's a little more, maybe it's time to pay a little more attention to what people are really laying their money down for as opposed to what sounds good to me and <clears throat> why I'm rotating this record five times as much as the other one simply because it has more tempo or what have you. How do you get to programmers who say, this is what my station sounds like, this is the parameter of my stations when the listeners' parameters are changing every day? 
I just, I just started in the business, and uh, you know, I've been uh, asking a lot of advice. You know, how you get to talk to a music director, a program director, and you know, how you get phone. your songs added. And they said, you know, accountability. You should follow through. You should always be, you know, honest to your word to the radio stations. When SoundScan came out, everybody went, aha! Now you can't say, well, we shipped 750,000 units at it. You know, so it shipped gold and came back platinum. Now we've got BDS, so when they say, hey, we want tickets, we need this, we need that, that's BDS is their form of accountability. You know, if your artist is coming in town and they want to meet and greet and have a giveaway weekend and they're spending the album, you know, once a day at three o'clock in the morning, you know, I mean, maybe you should think a little bit. I mean, that's, this is our form of accountability. You know, there's one-tenth of the people from radio in here and that's because it's their job to sell advertising and it's our job to sell records. We're all on the same side. We're trying to make money. You guys are, we are too. It's not a matter of an offense, defense. I don't like to hear that. I mean, that's not what we're about. You're right. No, there's no, easy, you're, 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 we're you're utilizing right. our information the best we can. It shouldn't be us against you guys. That is so wrong. I think it's, we're, in, we're, we're in the middle of some exciting times. I mean, I think it's exciting when you can take a record like Four Non Blondes, when I called Billy Brill, and he was, he was so morbid that day. I talked to him. He was like 43 over 3. And he Bad had day at the Brillster house. But, but the point is, is he, it wasn't about ads. He had MTV, he had AOR Airplay, which went to 110 one. ads. He had New Rock Airplay, and the record came through, and it started selling. And I think that's great. The one thing that I've learned this year with the Four Non Blondes is that when we first started this record, and nobody wanted to play this, I have been through blood, sweat, and tears for eight months with the Four Non Blondes. And the thing that Interscope did with this record that sometimes when I was in radio that I wished you guys did was we did not give up on this record. The commitment was so, even when we didn't want to work the record after the first four months, um, we pushed back the two Dre dates, we pushed back the Robin Zander, we completely left everything alone until we were committed to break the Four Non Blondes. And it's, it's just, it's the best feeling and, and now radio is coming to us and saying thank you for giving us the time. It doesn't matter if you get no reports on a record. A record that's getting play is alive. It, yeah. Previously it didn't look like it was alive. It had no reports. Now if it's getting play, you can see that play without reports. You can see it's still alive. And that can in turn allow you to keep stick with the record. You know you've got play. You know it's really going on there. It's time for, can you get in on this tight? It's time for another cocktail party at the Poe. Ooh, just one? Just one of, of many. Along with Michael Steele, I'm Rich Stevens. Let's go into the party. Let's find this guy a job. Please. Help. Bobby, how do we say this? Happy 25 years. Happy, happy 25 years. Another great he's convention. He's leaving me out here. This he's is talking, the beautiful Peggy Miles. leaving me out. Carol Merrill. Carol Merrill, or as Daniel says, Pe Peggy. Uh, 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 yeah. Bobby, keep doing it. It's always great. And, and roll, Bobby. here's to 25 more. Congratulations on an amazing, amazing 25 years in the business. This is the best convention in the business, and I'm glad to be back here this year. Congratulations on your 25 years in the business. You are the best, you are the best, and your conventions are the greatest. You are a fantastic host. I'm going to keep coming back year after year because when it comes to conventions, Bobby Poe, you're the best, baby. Woo. And Bobby, may the worst thing that ever happened to you be my monologue at the Larry Stevens Roast. That was bad. That was bad. That, real bad. Real bad. Real sucked, bad. sucked pretty bad. Okay. 20, was it 25 years? 23. You, it's 23. I don't know. I hear 25. I hear, I hear 30. Do I? Let's make it, let's make it 50 years for the Pocat. And still, and still getting better every year. I will go say that in Jurassic Park. It's a big, giant dinosaur foot keychain for uh, every member of the Bobby Poe Convention. As you can see, I'm going to say that the devil sign is a little bit immature. I'm going to go say that the devil sign is a little Wearing the signo, uh, la signo Carlos style for the 90s, uh, falling through the school design. Uh, please, what is your name? Heidi. Heidi, you have a last name? Stoy. Stoy, okay. How do you spell it? Stoy. 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 Stoy.
S-T-O-Y. No, Heidi. <laughs> Are we on? And uh, anyway, I, I get my contact.